In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to graph equations of horizontal and vertical lines, graph linear equations in standard form using intercepts, and using linear equations in standard form to solve real-life problems. So, we're going to talk about horizontal and vertical lines right now. The standard form of a linear equation is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b are not both zero. So one of them can be zero, but not both of them. Consider what happens when a equals zero or when b equals zero. When a equals zero, the equation becomes by equals c or y equals c over b. Um, and that is because this, if this a is zero, the whole term drops out. Because c over b is a constant, you can write the equation as y equals lowercase b. Similarly, when b equals zero, the equation becomes ax equals c, and if you divide a on both sides, you get x equals c over a, and then you can write it as x equals another constant, lowercase a. Okay, So we're going to look more into horizontal and vertical lines in just a moment. So if I look at a horizontal line right here, okay, it doesn't matter what the input is, the output is going to be this b value. Okay, So that is y equals b. I can put any value in for x, but since there's no x, my y value stays b. And on a graph, that's a horizontal line. For a vertical line, we have uh, pretty much the opposite situation. x is going to equal our constant a value, and it doesn't matter what my y value is because x is always going to be that a value, and this is a vertical line. Just a reminder, this is a function, this is not a function. So we're going to graph y equals 4, and then we're going to graph x equals negative 2. So to graph y equals 4, you could always make a table of values. You can always do that. Um, but for horizontal and vertical lines, you can just recognize that since I have y is equal to a constant, I'm just going to have a horizontal line at the y value of 4. So this is my 4 uh, y value, and all of my x values are going to be y. So if I wanted to draw points, I could. I could draw a point right here, 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 and so on. I could draw as many points as I wanted to because I know that y is going to be equal to 4 regardless of the x value. And now I'll take my straight edge and draw a line through all of my points. And then put arrows on your line to show that it is infinitely long. And now we're done with the first part. For the second part, I'm going to graph x equals negative 2. I'm just going to write that down. And same thing. In this case, we're going to have a vertical line because I have an x value by itself with a constant. Um, and all my x values are going to be equal to negative 2. It doesn't matter what y is. So I find negative 2 right here. And it doesn't matter what my y value is because I know that the only uh, piece of information is that x is negative 2. So I'm going to draw my points. You don't have to do this, by the way. You don't have to draw all your points. I'm just doing this to show you that every x value is negative 2 here. So. I'm going to draw my points like I did. I would just recommend drawing, if you're going to graph this, uh, doing the top point and the bottom point because the farther away your points, the more accurate your line will be when you graph it. And then once again, take your straight edge, draw your line through, and then include your arrows. And then we're done with this one. So now we're going to use intercepts to graph linear equations. You can use the fact that two points determine the line to graph a linear equation. Two convenient points are the points where the graph crosses the axes. The x-intercept of a graph is the x-coordinate of a point where the graph crosses the x-axis. It occurs when y equals 0. An easier way to think of that is the x-intercept is the value of x when y equals 0. The y-intercept of a graph is the y-coordinate of a point where the graph crosses the y-axis. It occurs when x equals 0. Another way to think of that is the y-intercept is the y value when x equals 0. To graph the linear equation, ax plus by equals c, find the intercepts and draw a line that passes through the two intercepts. To find the x-intercept, let y equals 0 and solve for x. To find the y-intercept, let x equals 0 and solve for y. So for this example, we're going to graph this equation, 3x plus 4y equals 12, using our intercepts. So first, I'm going to find the x-intercept. So to find the x-intercept, Remember, the x-intercept is the value of x when y equals 0. So all I'm going to do is plug in 0 for y. So 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. But if you remember, 
I don't even have to write this down, this whole 4 times 0, because I know that this whole entire term is going to drop out because 4 times 0 is 0. So you can just get in the habit of getting rid of that term. So I'm going to rewrite this as just 3x equals 12. Now I just solve for x, so th divide 3 on both sides. I get x is equal to 4. So my x-intercept is 4. The point that corresponds with this is 4 comma 0, because remember, the x-intercept is the value of x when y equals 0. So when x equals 4, y equals 0. Okay. So I'm going to graph this point, 4, 0. It's right here on the x-axis. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but find the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 for 3x. But if you remember, this whole entire 3x term is just going to go away. So I'm just going to get 4y equals 12. I'll divide 4 on both sides, and I'll get y is equal to 3. And remember, the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0, so y is 3 and x is 0. So my ordered pair is going to be 0, 3, and that is right here on the graph. The last step is to just draw a line through these points using my straight edge. Then draw your arrows. And I recommend uh, having your line extend on the entire graph. If anything, have it go off a little bit. Um, it's a little bit harder for me because I'm using a stylus and an iPad. Uh, but on paper, it's much easier to graph. Anyway, we've successfully drawn our line through our uh, two intercepts. And now we're done with this one. You are planning an awards banquet for your school. You need to rent tables to seat 180 people. Tables come in two sizes. Small tables seat 6 people, and large tables seat 10 people. The equation 6x plus 10y equals 180 models this situation, where x is the number of small tables and y is the number of large tables. For part A, graph the equation, interpret the intercepts. So we're going to graph this equation by finding the x-intercept and finding the y-intercept, and then plotting those two points, and then drawing a line through those two points. So to find the x-intercept, it's when y equals 0. So I'll do 6x, and then if I plug in 0 for y, that whole term goes away. So this 6x is just equal to 180. I'll divide 6 on both sides, and then I get x equals 30. Okay. So the point that corresponds with this, x equals 30, is 30, comma 0. So this is one of the points I'm going to plot. For my y-intercept, I'll plug in 0 for x. So this whole entire 6x term goes away. So I'll just have 10y is equal to 180. Divide 10 on both sides, or you could just cross out a 0 on both sides. You get y equals 18. And the corresponding ordered pair for that one is going to be 0, 18. So now all I have to do is plot these points and then draw a line through it. So I'm going to actually bring these points down. So on my graph, I see the point 30, 0 is right here where my mouse is. So I'm going to put that right there. And then my other point is going to be 0, 18, which will go right here. And now I want to actually not draw a line through this, but just a line segment. Because if you look at the context of the problem, scroll back up here, x is the number of small tables and y is the number of large tables. It doesn't make sense to have a negative amount of small tables or a negative amount of large tables, so we're just going to be sticking with quadrant 1 here. Anyway, I'm going to align my straight edge. And I drew as best of a line as I could with my stylus. So we're done with part A. So we're going to scroll back up. Part B says to find four possible solutions in the context of the problem. Now, because my graph is hand-drawn on my iPad using my stylus and a flimsy straight edge, my graph is not going to be as accurate as possible. Your graph on paper will be much more accurate. But for this uh, part, part B, I'm going to go to Desmos, which is a graphing uh, online graphing calculator, and I have this exact function graphed. So this is the same line except for this time it's going to be more exact. 
and we need to find four possible solutions in the context of the problem. Well, if we remember, x is the number of small tables and y is the number of large tables. So I am not going to be able to have like 2.785 or some sort of fractional number of tables. So really, I should have a discrete domain here. So I really just want to find some whole number solutions. Well, right here, the intercepts 30, 0 and 0, 18, those are going to work as whole number solutions. Okay. Now on Desmos, and we'll use Desmos a lot this year, uh, I can slide my point on this graph and find integer solutions here. So I don't see one yet, but if I look at 5, I see that 5 and 15 is a point on this line. Okay, so that's one possible solution, 5 small tables and 15 large tables. If I go down here, I see that I could also use 10 small tables and 12 large tables. If I go right here, I see I can use, there, where are we? Fifteen small tables and nine large tables. If I go right here, I can use twenty large tables and six small tables. And then right here, here we go. I could use twenty-five small tables and three large tables. And then back to our thirty and zero. So those would be the actual possible uh, table matchings that we could use in the context of this problem. But anyway, now we're done.